Um, if you have a question for a coach, just use the raise your hand function. We'll just jump right into questions. All right, Ethan, I see your hand up first, so go ahead. Hey, coach, was just wondering what your thoughts were on the progression of the post players over the course of um, practice. Yeah, uh, we still we got a long way to go. You know, we've got a couple of returners in Lizzie Williamson and Mallory. Um, both of them, uh, you know, trying to maybe step up to another level. Um, Mallory Collier. So, uh, you know, hoping they can, again, take on a bigger role uh, than – Lorena and Tilda are options as well as freshmen excited about what they bring, but again, they're freshmen, so they're going to have some growing pain. So a uh, long way to go there. I mean, again, River Baldwin and Mimi Collins are both playing professionally in Europe. Uh, they both had unbelievable years a year ago. And uh, so it, it makes a big difference. We, uh, we definitely miss them right now. Rob? Yeah, Wes, uh, Madison expanded her game last season. She rim run. She did uh, things the team needed aside from sort of standing out in the corner, which is what she had done in the previous years. How can she can continue to expand her game, and what areas is she, is she um, does she have the talent to help you? Yeah, I think it starts with rebounding because, again, if we, if we play four guards some uh, – I think River and Mimi averaged about 13 rebounds a game. That's that's a big hit. So I think, um, you know, it's going to take the whole team to make up the difference there, what we lost. But I think Madison at the four, if she's in there as a fourth guard, I think she's going to have to step up and, and uh, continue to rebound and maybe get a few extra and, uh, you know, defensively. Again, if she's matched up with someone a little bit longer or stronger, she's going to have to be, you know, physical and compete in that area too. But uh, I think it starts with rebounding. Follow-up, sir. You, 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 I asked you, I think in Charlotte, you talked about playing guards. Eventually that means you when you re do get the rebound, you have a lot of players you can kick it out to initiate the fast break. And you said you probably would have to play fast if you played smaller. <laughs> Um, do you have the wherewithal to do that, and how would that affect you guys def defensively? Well, I think it starts with the defensive end. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think we got to do a better job guarding the ball. You know, we got to do a better job just getting down in a stance and keeping our player in front of us. I don't think we're doing a very good job of that right now. So it'll start with that, and then before you can run, you also got to get a rebound. So – you can run a lot better when you're not having to take it out of the net and take it out of bounds, but you can also, you, you won't run at all if you don't get a rebound. So I um, think those things are critical. And then just from a speed standpoint, you know, we're trying to have Zoe and Zamaria, uh, you know, run the point and try to push tempo. And we'd like to get Sanai and Isaiah down the floor and, get them uh, hopefully get the ball up to them ahead before the Deacon gets set and give them opportunities to score uh, early in the offense. Brian. So it's a, co a couple of talented freshman guards coming in and Devin and Zamaria. Uh, when you have a, we have a player like Zoe Brooks who last year got thrown into the fire as a freshman guard and played really well. How viable is, is her kind of perspective? We have to pass that on to the, the freshmen this year, what that experience is like and be able to help them along with that transition? Yeah, I think some, but I think you also got Sanaya and Isaiah who have, uh, and even Madison, even though she's not really a point guard or anything like that, but you've got those veterans that have been around and Zoe does a good job of trying to help people, but she, you know, she's a sophomore. So you probably lean more on those three that have, have four or even five years of college experience. Marissa? Hey, Coach, I noticed when you were talking about the post players, you didn't mention Caitlin. I know she's dealing with a hip. Any update on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, she, uh, you know, has 
has an issue there, a couple of things going on. So uh, she is uh, scheduled to have surgery next week. And uh, I guess I'm okay saying that much anyway. And uh, we'll see how that recovery goes. But, um, you know, we're going to have to make plans to do it without her for uh, for the time being, for sure. Chris? Which is dis it's disappointing because, you know, she was the veteran grad student that we had hoped could come in and take on a major role uh, with the loss of River and Mimi. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a setback for us. Hey, Coach. Uh, Chris Lee from WREL. Um, wanted to ask you about the challenge of the ACC in the preseason poll. There's six teams from the ACC there, three in the triangle alone, yeah. and then plus the addition of the three new teams. Um, what does the challenge of the conference look like uh, just with all of that and then also yeah. with the addition of those new teams? Yeah. You know, uh, obviously it's been – very strong. I think uh, last year, uh, I think Kyle, you may can help me. I guess we had, we have eight or nine that made it in the tournament. So, uh, you know, over half the conference made the NCAA tournament a year ago. And obviously our quality, quality teams, unbelievable players, great coaches. Uh, and then you throw three new ones in there. So now you have 18 teams competing for one crown. So, yeah, it's a challenge. Obviously, Stanford's had a storied history, and that's, you know, who we played uh, in the Elite Eight or to get to the Elite Eight. So uh, they come in with a lot of uh, a lot of success in women's basketball. But Cal and SMU also add to it. So uh, it, it's it's unbelievable. You know, when I look at the players uh, that are returning, a lot of really really good guards, for instance, throughout the league. Um, it's a challenge. I mean, every every night, every game, you got to be ready to play, and you got to play well, uh, or uh, you're going you're going to take a hit. Yeah, it was eight teams last year. Yeah, um, Ethan, go ahead. Coach, in addition, in addition to losing River and Mimi's, just you know, great play on the court, that also leaves a leadership void off and on the court as well. Who have you seen kind of step up during practice and um, take on that role? Well, I think Sanai and Isaiah, um, you know, really have tried to be probably more vocal. I kind of agree. Madison's more of a lead by example. I think Sanai and Isaiah have tried to talk to the young players and and uh, pull them along a little bit. Definitely good having veterans like that on the court, almost like having a extra set of assistant coaches that can can help with drills and and different philosophy uh, things that you want to get done. So definitely great. And then I agree too with Madison. I think our freshmen have picked stuff up unbelievably well because um, you do. You throw a lot at them, try to get everything in before your first game so you're somewhat prepared for any situation. And so at times it's like taking a sip of water out of a fire hose, but uh, I think they've handled it really well. All right, go ahead. Chris. Hey, Wes, Todd. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Todd Gibson, yeah. CBS 17. Wes, what, um, when you talk about the great programs in college basketball, women's college basketball, State's now in that conversation. How cool is that? How hard was it getting this point, and what will it take to 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 stay in that conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah great point. You know, uh, we had that group that won three straight ACC championships and made it to the Elite Eight uh, before losing in double overtime to go to the Final Four, and then now you kind of got a new group that uh, obviously took this program to a Final Four. So, but every year is a new year. You know, last year when you take into consideration who all we had in that starting lineup, um, we were, uh, you know, picked a little bit lower than we should have been. Obviously I think this year, and, and it's always based on the year before, let's face it. So now this group is probably picked too high, uh, because I think people are undervaluing what river Baldwin and Mimi Collins did for us. Um, uh, 
in every aspect, scoring, like you said, leadership, toughness, rebounding, uh, you know, again, experience wise, they both had five years of power five experience playing at a high level. And, and now we're going to ask players that either have been, you know, role players, uh, or players that are freshmen, new players. So it's a, it's a big ask of them to try to step in and fill those roles. So, uh, but to maintain that you have to keep winning, you know, you've created a monster and now you got to feed it. And, uh, that's the tough part. So again, we got a lot of question marks, uh, a lot of things to address and to fix. Uh, so, you know, I know it could be coming out of the gate. Uh, we're going to have our challenges. Brian. Hey coach, obviously you mentioned going to be without Caitlin on the court for, for, for the time being, but if she can be able to, how possibly, Hey, kind of, kind of that uh, kind of a coaching role as she is a veteran player. Once she can like still be around the team and kind of pass on a lot of knowledge she has because she's played a lot of college basketball as well. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, Caitlin can be at times kind of quiet, and uh, obviously she's going through. Uh, I know this is disappointing for her as well. It's disappointing for us to be without her. I know it's disappointing for her to come in here excited about playing at this level and on a big stage and and now to have that taken away. So uh, she's looking at, you know, a pretty, uh, pretty long road of, of recovery and rehab and all those things. So, um, but it's always great to have, you know, a fifth year player around that can maybe uh, help the younger players uh, with some advice or, Maybe they see something that they can pass on for sure, but uh, I'd, I'd much rather have her on the court playing. Rob? Yeah, I think this question kind of piggybacks off uh, Gibby's question a couple uh, couple questions ago. Uh, Ten years ago, you were preparing off of WNIT to go play games in Broughton High School, and now you're here. <laughs> And now you're here and the other day, two people, I guess two tickets were sold $5,000 at NIL to go see you play your first ACC game. I know it's hard to be sentimental when you're immersed in what you're doing, but the growth of 10 years, uh, how proud are you of that? And I mean, I guess, does that motivate you at times? You know, obviously you mean you get tired, you're worn out or whatever, but you think of the enthusiasm the program has generated, does that kind of motivate you in the hard times to keep grinding and chasing the goals? Well, I mean, I think first of all, you got to, you know, salute our players, our student athletes that have helped us get this far, you know, from the first ones that were kind of laying the foundation and then uh, the next group or two that have carried the torch on. So you look at them, then you also have our fans, you know, I, we're selling out about every game. And uh, yeah, I made the joke when I first got here, I'm looking forward to the day that we have scalpers and, and now when you go on SeatGeek or StubHub or whatever, uh, it's pretty neat to see, uh, you know, see how popular those tickets are, or how much in demand they are, I guess. So uh, it is cool, but I agree with you also. We don't really have a lot of time to sit back and, you know, think about it, reflect too much because uh, you got to gotta move on, move on to the next step. And uh, there's always something going on, whether it's, you know, preparing for the season or, or, you know, high school recruiting. And then when the season's over, portal recruiting and uh, it's just constant. So don't really have a time, a really a lot of time to sit back and reflect. But again, I'm I'm more thankful than anything that our, you know, our fans and the community is supporting us the way they do and. I know it's great for our players also. Even when you come back, like we said, come back from Portland at 3.30 in the morning and there's thousands of people there to welcome you back. It's pretty humbling and uh, and pretty cool. Like and I said, it's kind of, kind of fun being a rock star in Rollywood, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Quick follow-up, sir. When you're at these AAU events, I know they have the events in Chicago and stuff. You got NC State across your chest. Uh, what's the difference between people recognizing that now as opposed to maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, it's definitely better. Um, you know, I think uh, when I first got here, the Wolfpack Club had Linda and I host a trip to the Kentucky Derby, and I think one couple signed up. <laughs> uh, so we didn't exactly have a whole lot of uh, 
you know, popularity going at that point. And then uh, just when you go to a football game or you're out around town, uh, it's pretty neat for people to come up and, you know, compliment on what the team's doing and things like that. So, and then of course there's the other side, you lose a game or two and people are wanting to know if you're going to be able to fix this mess or whatever. So it works both ways, but uh, definitely it's uh it's a lot of fun. And like I said, I owe a lot of it to the community and our players too. I mean, uh, I think part of it is we're winning, but part of it is I think our players are such good ambassadors that fans are, you know, excited about pulling for them and, and getting to know them a little bit. <clears throat> Trayvon? It was Trayvon Miles from ABC 11 in Raleigh. Uh, I think you're coming up on about uh, like 40 years um, coaching. Um, not quite. You, Come on, not you, quite. You, you okay. just you've been you've been at it for a while, Coach. Right. I'm just I'm just curious uh, with the with the landscape that's changing um, so much, and what seems like every few months or every few weeks, um, yeah. the college sports is. What is it? Uh, that, that keeps you motivated? What is it that keeps you wanting to come back for more and do this thing mm -hmm. over and over? Um, you, you know, it's changing yeah. in, the, in the form of yeah. you, you got to go recruit the portal now. Some coaches yeah. say you have to recruit your own players to keep them. Like, yeah. what is yeah. it about you? And, and you know how the landscape is. And we, we see different coaches, you know, getting out of this. What is it that, that yeah. kind of keeps you here? Yeah, it is a challenge, no doubt. You know, again, I think the – I think the NIL idea was great. I mean, I, I love the concept that was originally uh, designed for, and that's if you come in freshman year or maybe two years and you play well, a local car dealership would like to take advantage of your name, image, and likeness or whatever uh, and let you use a car or a company wants to you know, give you a little bit of money each month. I think that's great. Uh, but for it to be the way it is right now, the collectives and using it in recruiting, uh, it's tough. There's no doubt. And uh, so just trying to navigate all that, I could definitely uh, relate um, to uh, Tony Bennett the other day and and how it's just, you know, it is tougher. It's different. You're just, you know, not used to having to be a general manager also. So. It is different, but, you know, I, I still love the game. I still love being around uh, the young ladies in our program and uh, their personalities. I mean, I've always said I, we try to recruit good people and hire good people and make the journey fun. And uh, so I'm selfish. I want the journey to still be fun. And then I want our players to also feel like, hey, that was four of the best years of my life. So, um you know, I don't know. I guess that's the biggest thing. And uh, uh, like I said, it's it's also great to be at a university that supports you and, you know, an AD and Boo Corrigan and, and all this support staff and administration that, you know, uh, are behind you and give you an opportunity to compete at a high level. So uh, and winning helps, too, <laughs> for sure. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, let one last question, Brian. Take it away. Hey, coach, you could you could say the landscape of Reynolds Coliseum is changing too, with a banner going up uh, this coming season. Just how much are you? What are you envisioning that moment will be like, and just what's it going to be like having fans back in front of you in, in Reynolds Coliseum for a new season? Give them something more to cheer about. Yeah, you know, uh, pretty awesome. You know, again. We got a lot of banners hanging in there, and uh, I was um, I was an assistant coach when we recruited the kids that were seniors when they went to the Final Four, and so I felt a little bit of connection with those players and the success, and obviously K. Yao. Uh, but for this group to do it, I wish we could have done it two years ago when we got beaten the Elite Eight with that group because they had most of them had been here four or five years. Uh, but it was awesome. It was an unbelievable experience. And I got to say, NCAA, uh, both, you know, Portland and Cleveland, uh, host cities, everything was so unbelievable. You know, again, and Adidas, uh, their campus is in uh, 
Portland. So going there was cool. And then going to the final four and, uh, it's just special. I mean, I, I joke, you know, it only took me 35 years to get there. And this summer, my buddies were calling me finally four more, uh, but it was pretty special. And, um, uh, and I think part of it too, like I mentioned earlier, we were just enjoying the journey so much. We were having so much fun. We didn't want it to end. And you know, when it does end, you're not going to have exactly the same team ever again. So, uh, but to go through the people we went through, Tennessee, Stanford, Texas, I mean, that's a, uh, that's a pretty uh, juggernaut list of strong women's programs. So that made it kind of cool too. Awesome. Thanks coach. Thanks everyone. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Wes. Thank y'all. Have a good day.